coincidence that you and Jonathan are both were on Hell on Wheels and now you're now co-starring in a well, second series? No, I don't know if it's if it's so much a, a coincidence. It's because of Chad. Chad had a, a lot to do with the casting of, of the show. It's, he's worked with a lot of uh, very very good people, and there's. I think he drew in and said, no, I'm doing a show, do you want to be a part of it? And most of us just said yes, even before Neil was on board, and before Simon was on board, and before, without knowing the other actors were on board. We just got a way of drawing in um, good people. And this ensemble, we only, we only have three of us here, but the ensemble is awesome. It's truly remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> well, besides Chad, what else was the big appeal for you? Um, uh, well, John, Kelly, uh, Neil LeBute. His, I've, I've always wanted to do a Neil LeBute play. And uh, here I have the opportunity finally to work with Neil LeBute, and I don't really say anything. I don't get to say the words. I have to say them with my hands, with my face. Um, but it's still the same kind of twisted mind that you know, Neil has just a wonderful way of looking at human nature and um, twist it to our, our darker tendencies, our contradictions. And, and bringing that into, into this world, it makes the, the vampires more interesting, more three-dimensional, and it makes the human beings more uh, questioning their place in humanity. What is it? What is it to be human? What is what is the difference between just because you uh, you have that hunger, that blood hunger? Why is that any less viable as as a living entity on this planet than a human being? That gives you the right to say that one is not more. You know, it's like it's like you 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 start a, a development on a mountain. And we, you know, humanity progresses into the forest or into the jungle. And do we blame the animals higher up the food chain because they pick us off one by one? Well, we're, in, we're already intruding on their territory. So it's just, it's always an interesting question. And, and this world suddenly, a, a very viable thing happens in the world that creates an opportunity for vampires to not be burnt up by the sun. And that completely changes the changes the game. They no longer have to hide in shadows. So it's that I found fascinating. But those things are fascinating. What would be your general description of kind of the tone of it? Is it a very visceral kind of show? Yeah, I think it is. It's it's everything happens uh, very much in the moment, and I think a lot of the most of the time you don't have time to make an intellectual choice. You make a decision because something is happening that's threatening your life right now, um, and that's where the mistakes happen. That's where the that's where the things that, that when we don't have an opportunity to really start, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But wait a second, I shouldn't do that because this may happen. This may happen. You make a choice because something is threatening your life right now, and that could end up costing your life, or you could end up to see it end of the day. The, the group that we uh, start off with at the beginning is a group who obviously they've been alive for the three years that, <laughs> since the problems and the major, the major threat has been going on. So they are, they are survivors. But nobody is safe in this world. People are dying all the time. It's really, you know, it's, it's not a good place. So you play a be. deaf character yes. on the show. What was the challenge of, you know, being able to, like, communicate with the rest of the group? Well, that was, it was always a challenge, because not all of them were able to communicate with sign language. There was one, one character, character Muhammad, who we decided they were, they, he, he learned ASL through spending so much time with Sam. And they had a very, uh, very close uh, relationship. And that allowed, allowed him to communicate through Muhammad so that he wouldn't have to speak. Um, but it was, it, was always, it was always an issue. It was an issue with remaining true to the reality of someone who can't hear. And if most everyone is communicating orally, 
it doesn't really do him much good unless he's able to see the, the person's lips moving. And so that was that was always a challenge with the with the piece with all, all the all the other actors reminding him that you know, if I can't see you I can't hear you. And that became a, was a fascinating challenge. And just learning another language. ASL is a very complex language. And to try and get um, a fluency so that I could be understood, but there was also an alacrity with, uh, with my hands and with my face and with my body that hopefully the deaf community would be able to look at that and go, okay, I can buy it. It's like speaking another language and having somebody not hearing it in an accent. So that's the goal. So hopefully most of the time I achieve that. It's a big challenge. Big challenge. Did you find that hearing person to be difficult to not have your body language reflect sound around you? Because yeah. we turn towards people as we hear them approach. I had to always keep that in mind. And sometimes some, some things because there was loud noises happening. And I would, of course, react. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I don't hear that. So take two. Trying. Art of stillness. <laughs> yeah. And reacting to certain things because certain frequencies I would be able to hear. So it's choosing what frequencies can he hear and what frequencies can't he hear. So some sounds he would be able to react to. But um, the frequency of a human voice, just speaking, it's not, it's not going to hit. But perhaps a sound of pipes or an explosion or... Uh, Vibration. Yeah, absolutely. Those are things that choosing to, um, whenever he was sleeping, he was sleeping on the floor. So you could feel it. That's clever. Yeah. <laughs> Out of necessity, right? Yeah. Because yeah. again, just trying to make choices that support the reality of what, what this kind of world would be, especially for someone who can't hear, that's obviously it could be a very detrimental uh, to cause his life. Does that mean you're not wearing shoes? Sorry? Does that mean you're not wearing shoes? <laughs> Um, no, he wore shoes. I think he would lose his life probably if he didn't, didn't wear shoes too. Because they, they were mostly on their run. They're mostly going from one place to the next. And the beginning of, of the series, they actually show up and stay in a number of episodes in one, one place. And it's the first time in a long time that they've actually been able to not relax. They're not, they're not as safe as that. But perhaps sleep more soundly. For a few hours. Maybe you could comment on some of the relationships between the characters, just a little bit to introduce that world. Um, the, the world we come we come into is um, John's character and Kelly's character. They are in um, one place in an enclosed space, along with. Uh, an actress by the name of Rukia Bernard, she plays the, the character Doc, and she's also in that same place. And those three, they've been in this one spot for months. Um, there's another character who, the, there's a bulk of people that I'm a part of, Sam's a part of, who come back because one person uh, knows John's character. And so once these those three with the added five, suddenly there is a dynamic shift. Because who do you trust? You don't know you don't know those people. Suspect. You see, did you, were you guys in the in the, the talk back? You were not allowed to were you in there? So when you saw the uh, the, the, the introduction to uh, Kelly's character, and that's it. She's obviously capable of doing some pretty crazy stuff. And where most people are falling down to the vampire threat, she's not. I don't want to ruin the, the surprise for you guys if you, if you see it. But it's, 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 it's very evident that she is not the same as, say, would be the rest of us at this table. So, do we trust that? Do we not trust that? And that, and 
the people who choose to trust that, of course, people who don't choose to trust it suddenly creates um, a rift in the original group again. So there's a constant shift in, in the relationships of those human beings based on who they trust, who they don't trust, who's trying to, you know, who's now changing allegiance. Uh, it sounds like vampire chess. <laughs> well, it is, but that, that ultimately that's human chess, right? With the vampires being, you know, the, the, the opposing team. Yeah. That's pretty fun. You know, so maybe the, the, the bishop is using a pawn and you don't really feel like being a pawn today. You know, <laughs> well, thank you sacrifice so much. whomever. Right? So it's, it's fun. Thank you.